Okay, so carrier package unit. The call is no power at the thermostat. So we've just took off the electrical and that's really something. All right, let's dig into that. Okay, so what we've tested first and foremost was we tested line voltage coming in there. Do you want me to go ahead and switch over to voltage? Uh, sure, yep. Yeah. So, so it's three phase power. Three phase, let's maybe- I'll hold it. Hold that, yeah. you can yeah. do that. Yep, yeah. so one. I test them across to each other. So one to two. Yep, yeah. 213, one to, one to three. three. 212, two, two to three. three. 212 right so we have power yep. he chased it through we have power at all of the high voltage systems mm -hmm. um when it comes to the 24 volt transformers that's what drives the economizer which it is dead it's also what drives the thermostat so what we noticed was these thermostat or these transformers have a reset on them so this one is tripped um ben did check it it's getting it's 200 and 12 volts in, but no voltage out. That's because it's tripped. Go ahead and set this back to continuity. Before we just go flipping, let me switch this so it makes its test stats. Touch them, see if they meet. Nope, one more time. Okay, yep. so Ben's gonna check from one side of that terminal to ground. Do you hear it beeping? So that means the wiring connected to that transformer is shorted out to ground somewhere. So even if we trip that, if we turn that on, it's gonna trip right away. So now we have to tear it apart and find what's shorted okay, out. Okay, we reset the fuse. We've checked all of the obvious points and we don't see anything tripped out. We're gonna go ahead and uh, fire it up and see if it trips. Go ahead. Oh, that's no good. Turn it on again. Okay, off. Okay, so it tripped. So it sounds like something down here is making yeah, the, so the buzzing noise. That shattering is going to be one of these contactors being energized and not pulling in properly. So one of the contactors is bad. So possibly a contactor. To me, that's what it sounded like. So we're going to go through and we're going to unhook the contactors one at a time. Turn it on. And, and then... see if we can't isolate it. So right. we're going to get set for that. All right. I don't even remember where we left off. Nope. But... As we dig into this, it just becomes more and more confusing. Nothing seems to make sense and we're trying to isolate. Was the contactor chattering? We unhooked the 24 volts from the contactor and no. Still, everything low voltage in here was just freaking out. It was all, the relays were chattering. So we chased everything down and uh, let me show you what we've come up with and why nothing makes sense, right? We're gonna power this on. So we powered it on. It pulled in the blower, it turned on the compressor and the fans, and we are cooling. So what we did was disconnect the low pressure sensor. Now that might not make any sense because I've had another video that explains in order for anything to run, right? The 24 volts leaves, it runs downstairs, it comes back to yellow then it powers the low pressure it leaves and comes back then it goes to the high pressure leaves and comes back so if power doesn't make that whole journey this cannot come on except this is on and that is disconnected if i try and connect it it trips out what's happening is this board i believe is bad based on so we're gonna meter yep we're gonna meter from red to ground this is power going down to the thermostat 25 right 24 so we're good now y1 y1 is cooling the thermostat is not calling for cooling how about uh, how about green that's the fan green up here yep uh 12 volts yet the fan is actually running properly. This board is just sending power wherever the heck it wants, which is why when we let it run its course and give it the 24 volts into the system, it freaks out. I can't leave it running this way because there was no high pressure, no low pressure. You know, we've got, we've got no safeties, you know, so we can't let it run. Plus 
earlier I was here and I noted it was really hot in the dining room. And now that makes sense because sometimes if it's calling for nothing, it heats. Sometimes if it's calling for cooling, it heats. Um, but regardless, in a combination when everything's connected, it tripped that little breaker. So this board needs to be replaced. Um, we are a year and a month outside of uh, installation and guess what? That board has a one year warranty. Kudos to the engineers. So we'll figure out where we can find this locally and get back with you. All right. Powering on. Here's my real curiosity about what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna fire up the meter here. And I'm gonna see if we meter across Y1, which is cooling, and common. Uh, the thermostat is not calling for cooling. Yet everything is pulled in. First stage, second stage, blower it's all going crazy uh, but hey look so it just turned off the air and it turned on the heater let's see if y1 remember y1 is the uh w1 w1 is the heat all right so the thermostat is actually calling for the heat so when it wasn't calling for anything the air conditioner comes on when it calls for heat, the heat will come on. And then at times they'll find themselves in conflict and then it'll trip that little five amp. I mean, again, the board. The board is what sends all the power to the appropriate places. If the board is shot, that would cause this kind of like robots making its own decisions behavior. Uh, I did find a new board locally try and swap it out and see if that takes care of it all right so new board the gentlemen have wire for wired that and uh let's power it up All right, so when you touch probes to probes, we get the beep. We're testing continuity one wire to the next, trying to figure out why so wacky. So go ahead with this one. So we've got a wire that is shorting the ground, which means that 24 volts running through that wire is being conducted through the body, which would make all of the chattering and weird. So that is the high pressure sensor. Awesome. So let's walk over here. You're good. So this is the high pressure sensor. And sure enough. Tim. So that rubbed. And then actually the copper then conducted the 24 volts through everything. Yeah. And so the 24 volts was just tripping out everything. That's why the solenoid was buzzing that's why everything was going crazy so this will be as simple as securing the wires up and electrical taping that up low voltage shorts man low voltage shorts are terrible to find but there you right, go. so the wire really wasn't damaged just the cover so they electrical taped it put some zip ties on there so now nothing is touching the copper so now the new moment of truth
shouldn't be running. Uh, so normally the the thermostat hasn't would need more time than that to boot up. Do me a favor, meter the uh, Y1. Right from Y1 to ground, we got 24 volts. We do not Y2 to ground. No, so we still shouldn't be cooling. Did we cause another short somewhere else? I mean, we shouldn't be cooling. And the high pressure sensors. What's the buzz? You hear the electrical buzz? There is a buzz. Yeah, it's just solenoids. It's just still freaking out. Yeah, so again, why do we have 24 volts? run into the solenoid when nothing is falling. That should be just looking at RGB1. Okay, so I want to start with this. The compressor is running. So test Y1 to ground. Y1 to ground. And we're, we're at zero. Uh, we're, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm on track. We're at zero. Uh, Y2. Y2. Okay, so also as far as the thermostat goes, there's no reason we should be running. And the contactors actually aren't pulled in. So check your voltage um, single line at a time across the bottom, right? So across the bottom, we got 210. Across the top, we have zero. That's a different story. Do one to ground. So from one leg to ground, we have 120. And from the other leg to ground, we have 120, but the contactor isn't closed. The contactor is open. There should be no power running across. So now we fixed the short, but the short burnt out the contactor. Um, because go ahead and do your voltage across the top now. All right, so now when we go voltage across the top, read zero because you only have 120. It's half of the 120 that runs around and is coming back. So push that in, you got it. You just close the other half. So one of these legs, you can, you can, one of these is closed internally and one is not, which is why the system runs all the time, even when it's not being called for. So new contactor. All right. So there's the old contactor and I don't know if you can see how burnt up the inside is. So it's a good thing we changed it. The new contactor's in, everything is running. Uh, it actually turns out that inside there is a dehumidistat that in the absence of the thermostat asking for things to be done, the dehumidistat is sensing that the humidity is too high inside and it operates layers of the equipment behind the scenes. So even though the thermostat wasn't calling, the reason these were both pulling in is because it was trying to dehumidify the air inside and that's just a complexity of this system that i am unaware of so thankfully we have good resources to reach out for to get those answers when we're stuck so we did find lots of legitimate problems right uh, the control board definitely did get zapped but likely it started with that black short because um, we changed the control board and most of our problems went away, but that black wire high pressure was still shorted. So replacing that and then uh, the contactor replacement was just a good call because, you know, we did it for the wrong reason, but it turns out it needed to be done anyway from all the short cycling. So, there's the adventure of, uh, of learning, I suppose. So, that's the end of that.